Now that was a call made by convicted killer Greg McMichael to then Glynn County, Georgia District Attorney Jackie Johnson shortly after Ahmaud Arbery was shot and killed in February of 2020. Now that call and others have landed the former DA in legal trouble for allegedly hindering the investigation into Arbery's death. Now Johnson was indicted by the grand jury for violating her oath of office among other charges. Now three months ago, she filed a motion asking the court to dismiss the charges due to a lack of evidence. Well, yesterday, the judge ruled he would not dismiss the case, clearing the way for a possible trial. Now, Johnson was the top prosecutor in Glynn County when three white men, Greg McMichael, his son Travis, and their friend, William Roddy Bryan, chased Arbery in pickup trucks and killed him. Arbery was running through their neighborhood at the time and had not committed any crimes. Now, after the incident, Greg McMichael, who once worked as an investigator in Jackie Johnson's office, called her for help. Shortly thereafter, Johnson recused herself from the case, but according to prosecutors, not before she told officers not to arrest her former employee. Now, two months later, video of Arbery's murder would be leaked online, leading to the arrest of the three men involved in the shooting, including Greg McMichael. Now, the call that McMichael made to Johnson came up during a hearing for the three defendants. Take a listen. Space 18 is the voicemail left to then district attorney, and this goes to problem number four, risk of influencing and obstructing justice. From the crime scene. Jackie, this is Greg. Can you call me as soon as you possibly can? Uh, uh, we're, um, uh, my friend and I have been involved in the shooting, and uh, I need some advice right away. Could you please call me as soon as you possibly can? Thank you. Bye. This evidence shows from day one there was an attempt by these defendants to influence and obstruct the investigation of this case. As to all the evidence that was presented from defense's witness regarding Greg McMichael's former employment as Glenn County Law Enforcement, in rebuttal to that, we have the post record State's Exhibit 20, which you've heard about today. And I want to be clear on this, Your Honor. I, I am not saying, the state is not saying that the effect of these phone calls and discussions, voicemails to the DA then, um, that, that it has the desired effect. That's not the standard that the court must look at. You must look at whether the defendant had the intention of obstructing and influencing the investigation, and that's the purpose of this evidence, is to show that he wanted to influence and obstruct this. So the standard is both significant risk of intimidating witnesses or obstructing justice. Um, and that's the evidence that we're presenting before the court now. Now, the three men, as you well know, were eventually tried and convicted in November of 2021 for <coughs> killing Arbery. Now, two months before the verdict, a grand jury indicted Jackie Johnson for her alleged role in delaying that investigation. And Lee Murray, one of the attorneys for Arbery's family, reacted to her indictment. With regard to uh, Jackie Johnson, what was presented to the grand jury was first evidence that Jackie Johnson had a relationship uh, with, with Gregory McMichael, the, the father of the shooter, Travis McMichael, that immediately became involved in the case. The first phone call that Gregory McMichael made from the scene of the shooting was to Jackie Johnson saying, I'm in trouble and I need help. And instead of uh, opting out and saying that she had a conflict, she called the, the subsequent prosecutor, George Barnhill, and began to discuss and get his advice on the case before ultimately referring the case over to him without disclosing to anyone that she had referenced him for this case or that he too had a conflict concerning Gregory McMichael. And so the, the prosecution will show that she violated her oath of office, that Ahmaud Arbery and his family wasn't given a fair shake at justice from the beginning because she put her thumb on the scale by using relationships that she had developed over time. Now, Johnson is being represented by Brian Steele. Does that same, uh, that, that sound familiar? That's the same attorney who's representing rapper Young Thug in his racketeering trial happening in Georgia right now. 
No word on when Jackie Johnson's trial could start. And again, it's been delayed over and over because Brian Steele is, in fact, involved in that Young Thug trial. So it could be some time before we get uh, to trial on that case, if, in fact, it goes to trial. Uh, still with me, of course, is Criminal Defense Attorney, former prosecutor uh, Marie Panetta, and also Deputy Chief of Investigations for Gwinnett County, Georgia, Curtis Clements. Again, thanks, you guys, for being here. And, Curtis, I'll start with you. Um, it makes sense to me. It, you know, it's not odd to me that... Greg McMichael would choose to make that phone call first. Um, if you work next to power, you're someone who's in a very similar position to what he was doing, at least at some point in your career. You've moved beyond that now. But at the end of the day, it makes sense that he would make that call and maybe seek advice or maybe even a little help. Well, as the, the, the top prosecutor in the county, mm -hmm. you have to hold yourself to a higher yes. standard. And what happened here is where do you separate the line between friendship and fair and equitable justice and ensuring that this investigation is transparent mm -hmm. and is untainted by friendship or any other means that will cause this jury or the public to go awry. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, Marie, is as most folks remember, one of the big issues in that case is, remember, you, you heard Lee Merritt talk about a phone call she made to uh, uh, District Attorney Barnhill. Eventually, he decided to not press any charges. He saw the video that the world saw and still decided not to press any charges. Again, creating this appearance of impropriety. Big problem in this case. What do you think about this, Joe? She abused her power. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why Father McMichael called her is to say, you know what? Be part of the good old boys racism club. Mm -hmm. I heard this black boy. I didn't do anything. You can blur your original background. This nip it in the bud. Remove your background. Justice Best use of your favorite streaming software. Replace your background with your own image or use a stock image. And punish who needs to be you can blur this background as well. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, here you will find additional settings to tweak and split details. Don't arrest him. Everything we recommend fine. leaving hardware acceleration and quality on automatic. But you can choose if you top. wish to remove your... Yeah. There was intent to obstruct and delay justice and deny justice there. Yeah. Now, let's be clear. These are allegations, right? So it still has to be proven in court. And that's going to be my question to you, Curtis. Um, she claims that these charges should be dismissed because there is not, quote, a scintilla of evidence against her. And I say to this, there was a grand jury convened. Yeah. They decided to indict. Now, again, we all know the saying is that you can indict a ham sandwich. You don't need a lot of evidence to convince because, again, it's uncontested and you need just enough to raise the probable cause. So not a lot of evidence, but certainly above the level of a scintilla. Of course, of course. And what you have is, is not just the one phone call, but multiple phone calls. Sixteen to be exact. Sixteen <laughs> phone calls between the defendant yes. and the former DA. Yes. Uh, I think it would be hard-pressed for anyone to show that you were not influenced through your friendship mm -hmm. in those phone calls to suppress justice in this case. Yeah. Marie, i got to ask you. Like, she said she's, she refused herself almost immediately. She got that call. Apparently she did some other calls again. That has to be proven. But there were 16 calls. We know that. At least it went from his phone to her phone. You know, we're, we're assuming that they were on the other side of those phones. If they were taken after she recu recused herself, is that still problematic? Should she just have rejected those phone calls and just moved on? She should have told him, I can't help you. Yeah. We need to investigate. Yeah. A proper investigation needs to take place. He called her so that she can nip it in the bud. It was a good old boys club. And he thought, you know what? This boy's life is nothing. That's right. And we can say he was racist because yeah. the law says it was motivated by racism. Yeah. So for her to take part in that mm -hmm. makes her complicit yeah. in the effort to evade justice and deprive that boy of his right to life, and someone took his life and she just swept it under the rug. That's what he called her to do, sweep it under the rug, and she yeah. made an effort to do that. That alone is enough for her to be held accountable. Yeah, and even her, even yeah. though she recused herself from the case almost immediately, she still has a large sphere of influence yes. in that area, and she can ultimately affect the outcome of that case. Yeah, and from the very beginning, and you see the body cam footage of when the cops arrived, you could see Greg and Michael working the cops on the mm -hmm. scene, being used to being around law enforcement. Mm -hmm. You could tell they had that kind of comfort. What y'all think? I think it's going to go to trial unless she pleads guilty. And then we deal with that. But 
I think she should go to jail. Am I the only one? Am I the only one that feels this way? That's the DA that allowed for a Maud Aubrey case in her opinion was to be not let it be challenged and then the tapes leaked and then they heard it all that's why I said this whole judicial system has to be shaken up turned outside upside down and these racist morbid people that are in control we have to replace them with people that love justice and remain true to justice. That's the only way it's going to work. And as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter what their color is, as long as they committed to justice. And with that being said, I want to know what y'all think about it. She wanted to dismiss the case. <laughs> Jackie. No, 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 Jackie Johnson. Your time has come. <coughs> y'all leave y'all comments below. See you in the next video.